This could be the shortest video about making something I've ever done. Cause, um, well, I've already done it. Sorry about that. Maybe I should make another one just to show you what I did, huh? We'll start at the beginning. I put the propeller on for the engine run the other week and I used the backing plates that went with it because that would make the bolt lengths correct. Um, I wasn't really intending to actually have a propeller spinner on Frankenstein, but now we've got this and I just wanted to cover up this little piece in here, really. So I've actually got a spinner. It's off a Cessna 172, as is the propeller. And it sits on quite nicely. I just don't know if it's actually what Frankenstein would have. So, um, yeah, that, you know that annoying little voice in your head? Well, it piped up and said, bet you couldn't make one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little dome that just goes over here. So that'll be one piece, and then I'll make another piece that'll just go here, and another one that goes there. These ones are actually fairly easy to make because there's no compound curve in them. They're just actually straight, like a, well, it's not straight, but you know, flat through there. And then we'll just have to do a little fairing around here. And same with that side. So they're, they're the easy bits to make. This bit here is the challenge and to try and get it center and all of that sort of stuff. And I've only got, I'm just gonna use the English wheel I've got over there. So can't spin one up on a metal lathe or anything like that. We're just gonna have a go. Righto, first thing I needed was to, the dimension of that edge from there to there. Not, as you can see, not that edge. See it's tapered. So we wanna measure from there. It's a bit difficult, but I guesstimated and came up with a plate like that. There we go. I just, just drew some lines in there just to help me keep in the center of everything and all of that. But now, as you can see, we need to make that fit like that edge there. So we want, we want this skin to touch this edge and then dome from there. So we're just gonna use the English wheel. I don't wanna shrink anything because that'll leave marks. So we're just gonna use the, the sharpest die that I have, and we're just gonna go for it. All right, what I'm trying to do here is raise all of that up into that dome like this from the flat. So we're not trying to shrink these edges. We're just gonna raise the whole lot. I've only put these marks in to help, well, it helps me when I'm in the English wheel to work um, to the center. And this edge here is going to be about where that flange will be, where the screws will go. So that edge there needs to match this edge here. So you can see how he sits like that. And we've got a long way to go. So we've got to stretch this area here up and not touch this edge. So um, that way it'll, it'll sit down nicely. And then we've got to continue on with this dome bit. Clear as mud, huh? Now another option, instead of using the English wheel, is using a hammer like this and a beta bag like that, 
or a, um, I think they use a stump or something like that and bash the snot out of it to get a shape like this. Thing is, as you can see, I split this one. I mean, we curved it a fair way. So, I mean, I've probably just got a little too excited with my bashing and um, I don't know, I seem to have more success with doing this than um, using the hammer just because it's a lot more controlled and measured as opposed to um, each blow it may not be exactly where you want it or slightly harder than the last time and it's a bit more severe in the one spot when you're bashing as opposed to stretching a lot bigger area i don't know i just seem to have a lot more success with the english wheel than i do with a hammer and a beater bag especially for these extreme curves i suppose all right how are we looking now let's see oh, i'm getting there getting closer you can see beautiful sunset by the way look at that oh that's going to be nice anyway back here focus that's come in a bit nicer please folk there we go so um still a little bit high here but we'll worry about that later on that just means we need to raise this area here a little bit more so it's not quite matching that angle there isn't quite matching that angle so to fix that don't touch this edge but we've got to raise this bit up to i don't know a few more mil yet and then we'll continue that radius back on into there like that. So more work to be done, but we're on the right track. Check now. Sits about there. How are we looking? Oh, that's pretty good in there, isn't it? A little bit of a gap, but I've got a little trick up my sleeve for that. We've got to allow for these side panels. So that's pretty good, I reckon. So we'll, we'll put the side panels on. And I'll talk about them a little bit and what I did. And um, then we'll talk about how we got the center of this because we can't just trust that we actually got to find the real center of this now that we've made it isn't that cool though we can that's come from a flat sheet and it sits just like that not bad eh now to make these side bits it's not a simple flat piece it is flat but it's tapered see so this diameter is bigger than this one so it slopes down so that means it's not just a rectangular piece that goes in there so it took I made a paper pattern of where it's supposed to, what I needed, and, um, well, like that, see? And then it also helped me get the shape of the propeller and where its location is, and those numbers there is when I, when I made the, pap um, the, the pattern, it was actually a little bit short, and then I could make a measurement to the blade so I can get a little bit more accurate when I made the piece up. Now, remember, when you make a pattern like that, yeah, and you transfer it to the material, this is actually the inside of the material, not the outside. If you do that on the outside and, and roll it the wrong way, the holes won't line up and you'll be frustrated because instead of the hole being, where's the one, like that, it'll probably be like that, half a hole or even a hole out and then you've messed everything up and you cry a little. Righto, they're the two side bits that I've made using the paper patterns. Um, like I said, those paper patterns are for the mark on the inside of the, of the material and then because this is fairly thick, um, if you don't, the holes will be in the wrong spot when you go to put it up and curve it and then it'll be terrible. So another thing I like to do is I like to flare these edges around the propeller or, or um, even on the front here, I've flared that down as well. Um, you can sort of see there, a bit of a curve. 
So the forward one curve, I wanted that there because when the when the top part screws on, I didn't want a sharp edge chewing into the top part, so I wanted it flared in, and it adds strength to it. Um, this material is fairly soft, so when it's spinning, it actually wants to bulge out a little bit, especially around the cutouts. So putting a little flare in like that um, stiffens that area up, so it doesn't do that. And um, yeah, it looks cool. And it's just another part of the challenge. So at the front here, I've just gone between the bolts here and found centre. And then I've made a um, just a piece of metal with a right angle there. So now we can sit... Oh, the sun's in the right spot, isn't it? Now we can sit that like that. And then that's our imaginary, little, an imaginary line out to... Um, the center or where the center should be for the new spinner when you put it on When I do this I can get some sort of apparatus like a stick with a on a step ladder, which I did Taped together so then we can project where the center is out here We can pop the, the piece on and then it'll tell us where the center is simple, hey and it's a lot easier to do that when you're on a flat surface, but because of the way the shed's set up and all of that, this is not a flat surface, so it was very terrible and very painful to get that. But we did. Trust me. Righto, there we go. All done. That looks much more something that Frankenstein would have, huh? Yeah, I reckon. Uh, all I had to do to transfer or to find these holes I just had a piece of masking tape down here and a, and a set distance. Once the, the new nose bowl was sitting on there and centered with our, with our reference line, uh, then we could transfer the holes back onto this and drill them off. So a um, little bit of mucking around, but I think it's all right in the end. Yeah, that's definitely something more Frankenstein-y, I reckon. Now that I've made this, I've got an idea on how to make one that will be, a, you know, it comes out here like this, but um, we'll do that another time, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon. This will do for now. This will get us flying. Job done.